Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Shauli. I'm the CEO of Armo, and uh, we are the company behind uh, the open source Cubescape. Um, I know it was mentioned in one of the earlier talks today around uh, tools that you can use to, to scan your Kubernetes cluster against different frameworks and misconfigurations. And it has been used quite um, frequently in the last uh, year or so, and we've scanned, well, we've scanned over 20 clusters to date, but when we reached the 10,000 clusters, we wanted to do this analysis of you know, what we've learned, what we're seeing in the industry, and I wanted to share that with you. Um, so first of all, what have we looked at? We've looked at the data set uh, of 10,000 clusters. 48% uh, of the uh, users uh, were in North America, and 33% were in Europe, and the rest were in EMEA and APAC. Uh, if we think about cluster sizes, uh, we see that 35, uh, let's say even almost 70% of uh, clusters had less than 10 nodes, up to 10 nodes, and about 6% had over 50 nodes. Um, what we see in terms of trends is that we see uh, clusters getting larger and larger. Um, what is not here, and also we've seen, is that the number of clusters per user. Uh, it is also growing. Um, I think like 5% of the users had more than 25 clusters, uh, which I personally think it's, it's way uh, too much. But I do think that like, there is this kind of like notion of the trade-off between the size of the cluster and the number of clusters and how uh, you more than manage it. Uh, so we see that in the data quite, uh, quite often. In terms of job titles, we see that 57% uh, of the users uh, are DevOps users, um, which might be surprising to some, but I hope that it's not, um, because it is a security tool and many people have these misconceptions that DevOps don't care about security. Uh, actually, in a Gartner um, uh, research lately, uh, it was told that actually 30% of organizations, when, when they were asked who is in charge of the Kubernetes security, said that DevOps uh, do that. And uh, we can see it in our data. 24% of the users are security engineers, security architects, um, security people who are hands on and who are, are in, the, uh, in the material. And 5%. Uh, DevSecOps, which is something that, that we see, of course, more and more. Um, we scan uh, usually uh, across different uh, frameworks of security. Uh, the Mitre attack framework that was developed by the Mitre organization and was adjusted to uh, Kubernetes by Microsoft. The NSA and CISA guidance for Kubernetes security uh, that was issued by the NSA. Uh, the Armor Best Practices, which is basically a framework that we took the most important parts of those two and took them together. And then there is DevOps best practices, which is basically an enhanced version of those security methods, but also to non-security uh, checks. So for example, uh, if you're running without a liveliness probe, it's probably uh, a bad practice in terms of DevOps, but it's not really a security issue. Um, so these are the type of controls that we had there. What we've seen is that there is a, there is a very large, of course, um, correlation between your score on all of them. So it's not that the NSA and the Mitra are very different in what they assess. If you are bad in one, you're bad in all. Uh, that's basically what we've seen. Um, and another best practice is to keep your score below 30. You need to fix, to continue fix, uh, fixing things. And uh, when you get below 30, that's usually a place where you're in a good position. If you are below 10, you're in our best 10%. And if you're above 60, you're in the worst 5% uh, of clusters that we've seen. In terms of the top five misconfigurations that we see um, in the market, that we see uh, out there, um, it is run privileged containers, cluster admin binding, missing resources policies, we'll talk about that in a minute, and not using immutable uh, container file systems, which is very hard to do, it's hard to use, and I understand why many people don't do that, and not, and not blocking the ingress and the egress uh, of a microservice that is not supposed to be open uh, to the internet. Now, 100% of clusters had at least one issue, and that's not surprising because you know how, how you know, compl complicated Kubernetes configuration can be, but also it is because uh, some misconfigurations are okay. You can live with them, and fixing them get, gets you more pain than actually solving them. And that's okay, you don't have to be uh, perfect. Um, what is more concerning is that at least 65% of clusters had at least one high severity uh, misconfiguration, which is something like running in privileged mode or allowing privileged escalations uh, within the container or maybe having credentials 
uh, application credentials in, in your file system, in your container uh, configuration. So now I go into a little bit of the detail of that. Um, not having a proper uh, limitation, 63% of the clusters did not have um, workload limited in terms of CPU and memory, and that's a bad practice both in terms uh, of, of just best practice in terms of resource utilization, but also security-wise, coin miners, different applications that are going to utilize uh, CPU and memory, and you want to limit them uh, as much as you can. Um, the, 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 the second part is secrets. Secrets in configuration files, we see it, it's not one of the top ones, okay? Like the top ones were all 60% or more uh, of clusters, but, it, but still 37% of clusters add application credentials or misplaced secrets in configuration file. Usually what we see is the, the AWS access keys, you know, S3 buckets keys, um, and I understand why developers sometimes do that. It's the easiest place to put it in. Uh, but of course, it is uh, very problematic uh, in terms of, of how to do it, uh, security-wise. Um, risky capabilities. Um, what we've seen is that many, many workloads, uh, well, at least relatively, 23% and 35% of workloads are running with either insecure or dangerous capabilities. Um, we see here on, on, the, on the right the different capabilities that we look at. Uh, the most problematic ones are, are uh, in these red triangles, the net admin and the net row and sysadmin. And we see not, uh, you know, it's not negligible. It is a significant number of clusters that are running with workloads with these uh, um, capabilities that they don't need to. Uh, finally, um, vulnerabilities. Misconfigurations always go together with vulnerabilities. And what we've seen is, well, 44% of the vulnerabilities that we've seen uh, were medium, 21% were critical, 35% were high. Um, in terms of critical vulnerabilities, 35% of clusters had at least one uh, uh, critical vulnerability uh, in one of the workloads, um, and 6% uh, had more than, uh, than six. Um, of course, the critical vulnerabilities are the things that we are most concerned about, but we also always need to think about them in conjunction with misconfigurations. Because the reality is, if you think about the vulnerability, and this is a critical vulnerability, it made a lot of noise uh, in 2021, uh, even early 2022, I think. And it was about being able to escalate uh, and penetrate uh, Kubernetes clusters uh, via um, a vulnerability in the container uh, uh, runtime. The thing is that finding that vulnerability is great, but even if you are vulnerable with this vulnerability, if you put the right controls, if you didn't allow privileged container to run, if you didn't allow privileged escalation within the configuration of that container, even if you have that vulnerability, you are not, um, it's not exploitable. Uh, it, it's very hard to exploit by the user, by, by the attacker. And that's why we think it is very, very important to actually take the two together. And you know, we are in CNCF and we talk a lot about roadmap. That's exactly the next thing on our roadmap, like cross-referencing your misconfigurations and vulnerabilities and actually understanding whether that vulnerability is relevant, whether it is exploitable right now in your current system. So this is uh, what we do, and this is how we do it. Um, yes, do you have a question? Ah, one minute. So let's see if in one minute I can show you how to get a scan running uh, very, very quickly. Um, let's go here. Don't look at my Gmail for a minute. No, I'm not going to do it in one minute. But OK, all you need to do is go to Cubescape uh, in GitHub. OK, you use this one liner. You just copy it uh, into any machine where you have a kubectl access to your cluster. You run it. Less than three minutes later, you will have your first report that tells you right there in the standard output uh, where you pass and fail for each one of those configuration tests. And you can go into, at the end, you have a link to a nice UI that you can log into and see also vulnerabilities. And from there, you can do many, many things. So thank you so much. Uh, it was 10 minutes, but I hope uh, I got it across. Thank you so much.